ACDC is a band with a reputation. Gritty, dirty, tongue-in-cheek. Their music is basic, muscular, primal. More than a hard rock band, I'd say they are a hard blues band. Their best tracks almost sound like a sped-up, distorted version of T-Bone Walker, Sister Rosetta Tarp or Sun House. Their detractors say that their songs all sound the same, that they lack finesse and subtleties. But is that true? Let's find out in this episode of my top 5 series, starting with... But how was I to the Jack know is a straight ahead blues, a slow tune. The first thing that hits you is that distortion. Sweet, round and firm, like a nice ass. But it's Bon Scott who is the main attraction of the track. The lyrics have a lot of double and tender similes between sex and the game of cards, yet it's not vulgar at all. A child listening to the song would probably wonder why this game of cards seems so dangerous. The delivery of the lyrics is also something worth your attention. Scott sounds both down to earth and edgy. He's never, look at me, I'm so cool, smart, funny. He's just a guy down the pub who's telling you a story. In fact, at a time in which hard rock singers were all uber cool men, the booing at the end of the song and Scott's reaction had that I couldn't care less about your opinion tongue in cheek attitude that really made ACDC stand out. Angus Young's solo is also commendable. Despite this being an early track, Angus has already worked his sound out, you know, with the little noises that make the guitar breathe and give it an unmistakable personality. But more on this later. When you're done watching this video, when you've written your comment with your top 5 ACDC songs, you have to watch the live at the River Plate version of Thunderstruck. It is quite something. Pure rock and roll energy. Thunderstruck itself, it's pure electricity. It's not the sheer amount of energy packed into the song. Listen to the attention to the sounds, especially those of you who think ACDC have no finesse. The drums are compressed and muscular. The bass is giving a steady beat like a giant heart. The guitar distortion here is crisp and brittle. It really sounds like the signal is about to break any time and so you're on the edge all the time. It never breaks though, and it does deliver the goods. On time! The gritty, high-pitched voice of Johnson is a great companion for the ride. Lyric-wise, notice how the I in the first verse becomes an inclusive we in the second, the oldest trick in the book, and it always works. By the way, if you can listen to the song without going thunder, shaking your fist and head on time, there's something wrong with you. Personally, I also get shivers. I'm emotional that way. Legend has it that at a time when everyone in rock was producing disco-influenced hits, ACDC's label, Atlantic, pushed them to do the same, and so they came up with Highway to Hell, which, you know, sounds nothing like disco. Before talking about the song proper, allow me an emotional moment. This was the legal soundtrack of an illegal dubbing of the first scene of the old IT film in the vernacular of the town where I come from. When I was in Texas, I used to watch it at least three times a day, possibly more, not for homesickness, but because the clown and the kid sounded so pissed off that it relieved any frustration I had. And as we leave the memory line behind without having said much about frustration, anger and how to make peace with the universe, let's note the lesson this song offers. A lesson so often forgotten by a host of hard rock and metal bands. You can use silence to get an even bigger sound. Listen to the start of Highway to Hell. The pauses 
don't just add to the tension and the anticipation, they also allow for your ears to rest. So when the chorus comes in and the music is full on, it really hits you. The song builds its meaning between lyrics and their delivery. Other people might just think this is an ode to hedonistic fun, but Gen X's like me, fed on cynicism and sarcasm with their mother's milk, know there's a deeper lesson. Here you have a hippie-like world of no rules, freedom and good time, but this idyllic state only works because it is all so individualistic. It wouldn't work if everyone was speeding up the highway with no stop sign, no rules in sight. And so, the song is not a hymn to life, but rather to loneliness, to a fixation for carving a life in which only your rules matter, and this hangs you into an anti-social hell. It's smoother, faster and funnier to get there, but in the end, it's still a living hell. The kind that makes you end up dead in a parked car, depriving the world of your talent, for example. As for the music, there's not much to say that we haven't before. In fact, depending on how fast you like your music or your preference in singers, Thunderstruck and Highway to Hell might switch places. I like Scott and I have them sentimental reasons, so there. Let's close this video with two bangs. Shake a Leg talks about some riffraff kid wasting his time on the street, doing all kinds of wrong things and, well, this is embarrassing, I'm not sure I get the meaning of the shake a leg expression. For ages, I thought it referred to dancing, the kind of violent and uncodified dancing you do when you're about to explode, but dancing nevertheless. Now, I'm not so sure. It might be about getting a move and doing whatever it is you want to do, or about physically fighting those that give you a hard time. What do you think? Internet fans seem to think that this song is ACDC saying, and I quote a comment on songmeaning.com, we're rockers, this is our lifestyle, and if you don't accept it, we'll kick your ass. Like in the case of Highway to Hell, I think there's more to the song than this. The surface of the lyrics surely talks about the usual bad boy behavior, easy sex, fighting, and so on but there's a hint of compulsive acquired behavior in them. Don't kick, don't fight, don't sleep at night. Spitting and biting and kicking and fighting for more. This seems more like a dog with rabies than a kid. There's bragging about sex, but no woman. You only get wet dreams and films and magazines. There's a general feeling that you get stuck in a kind of lifestyle that doesn't exactly give you back much for all the energy that it requires. Musically, I think this song features Angus Young's most difficult solo. In fact, looking high and low on YouTube, I could only find one person who really nailed the solo in notes and spirit, Matthias Fraga. The video of acdcfans.net house band's performance of Shake a Leg is in the description, check it out. Why is it so hard? We touched on this at the very start of this video, remember? Angus Young has his style that, in a way, is quite akin to that of Pink Floyd's David Gilmour. In both cases, you can get all the notes right, and yet, your playing is missing something. That something here is the grit, the dirt, the attitude Young brings to the table when he plays, and this solo is probably the best example of what I'm talking about. Raw, energetic, inflammable, in your face! It kind of encapsulates what it is to be young. And yes, I left that double and tender on purpose. Just like I'm leaving this call to action here. Hear me out. Some 95% of my viewers are not subscribers and I'm some 500 subscribers away from being monetized. Okay, what's in it for you? Being monetized means that I will use whatever little money YouTube gives me, and it won't be a salary, believe me. 
to produce more and better videos, better edits, better scripts, better research. So, before moving on to the top of this chart, take one second and make YouTube a better place for yourself. Hit that subscribe button. Thank you! Let's close the video with the absolute legend of a song that is Oh Laura Rosie. The story goes that the song is about a fat, not so beautiful groupie that managed to get into Bon Scott's pants. She was so good at sex that he decided to write a song about her. I guess this is also the crux of controversies around ACDC. On one hand, yes, this is objectifying a woman, body shaming if you will, allusion to cheap sex. But the moment Scott screams you could say she's got it all god damn you want to run down and party with Rosie and to the hell with the rest. The music and Scott's delivery of the vocals is incredible. In one five minute song you have a sense of danger, incredulity, irony, fun, powerlessness, appreciation, energy, explosion. It's like the whole ACDC catalog is summed up here with its grit, silences and muscles. It kicks serious asses, putting another whole lot of to shame. In fact, to be frank, a lot of other love songs become quaint and forgettable too. Let's face it. These are fairy tales about unrealistically beautiful and suave women, and they basically just stand there like paint left to dry while the macho man of the day does all the loving and the conquering. The tables are turned here. Rosie is like a primordial goddess. She is the one doing the conquering, nailing you at the wall. She is the one who graciously casts her lustful eyes on you and blesses you with attention. And when it's all said and done and yet another superb blues-drenched solo by Angus Young ends on a high note, you get Scott yelling out of his lungs like he can't believe what actually just happened. The song could end there at 3 minutes 40 seconds. But I suppose you need some aftercare to win down before the ambulance arrives. If this is disrespectful towards women, and it might well be, then we should raise a good 90% of tamer love songs out there. They are much more disrespectful in their own way. I say we keep them all and enjoy whole lot of Rosie for what it is, a feast for the years that is also a celebration for good times. Well, my dear Top Patters, if you like this ride, please hit the like button. And don't forget telling me your take on which five ACDC songs you like best. Come on, don't be shy, do it right now. This was Simon Mas, your friend with a music degree who isn't dead yet. See you soon for more music related content on this very channel. For the moment, stay cool and keep your top hat on. Bye! Simon Mas, music you love!